We'll just give it a few more minutes to see if we have any others. Hi, Christopher, thanks for joining. Hi, Robin. Okay, well, why don't we get started? So I'm Judy Anderson. I'm from Financial Aid. I'm the debt and default advisor. And I also do financial literacy for um, the college. And my partner today is Katrina Venta. Good morning, everyone. My name is Katrina Venta, and I am um, one of the coordinators for Concurrent Enrollment Student Success. Um, so I basically work with um, our high school students taking courses um, at the Community College of Aurora. I recognize some names, so that's great. Um, but yeah, we're going to go through this presentation, and I'll have Judy take the lead on most of them. <laughs> okay, so let's Go to our next screen here. All right. Um, so I will start this off um, and basically just explain what concurrent enrollment is. Um, I know 
Again, some of you have recognized the names, um, but concurrent enrollment basically um, is students, high school students taking college courses um, to get high school and college credits um, simultaneously. Um, and basically students who take concurrent enrollment courses, um, I know it's in the next slide probably, um, but they get their tuition paid for um, by the district. Um, so courses that you take and pass with a C or above um, will transfer to any public college or university within the state of Colorado. Um, and concurrent enrollment students, as you all know, um, or now you know um, that you are also a college student. You are a full-blown CCA student. Um, you get the same benefits as a CCA student. Um, you get the same access to our free services like tutoring, um, advising, career advising, and all of that good stuff. And then Judy, if we can go to the next slide. And again, as I've mentioned um, benefits of concurrent enrollment, it is free. So again, your high school pays for your tuition and fees. Um, and basically starting off college classes while you're in high school, you save a lot of money. Um, so attending CCA in general saves you about $10,000 compared to um, going to a university. But when you start off at a high school, at, while you're in high school, you are saving way more money than that, um, anywhere from $440 to $2,000 per semester. Um, and if you're a high school student and have taken at least 12 credits, um, you are able to qualify for the Ascent program, which is basically another free year after you graduate high school. So essentially after your senior year, once you have 12 credits, you apply for the Ascent program and you have a fifth year as a high school student, basically as an Ascent student and you get that paid for also. Um, one of the things I wanted to note is if you are done with high school and you are also done with your one year of Ascent and you still have some remaining credits, you would need to um, complete a financial aid application um, because the district will no longer pay for your classes. And um, in terms of your FAFSA, um, applying for that and also um, just the difference between grants and loans, Judy will cover in the next slides. Um, and if you have any questions at all um, about concurrent enrollment um, and anything related to that, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll also have a Q&A after Judy presents the rest. Thank you so much, Katrina. So let's move on to the financial aid portion. So this will be an intro to financial aid, financial literacy, and cash course. So what is FAFSA? So that's your financial aid application. Um, if you're gonna be coming in this fall semester, then it'll be the 22-23 FAFSA application that you would use. So what's included with FAFSA is grants like your Pell Grant. Um, there are federal, state, or institutional grants. Uh, the state grants would like be the Colorado Student Grant that we offer if you qualify for a Pell Grant. And these, you do not need to pay back. So we also have student loans, their federal direct loans as part of financial aid. They're paid back at fairly backed low interest rates with helpful terms. Um, they're also paid hourly, set maximum hours. So to qualify for a student loan, you have to be in at least six credit hours. And anytime you drop below the six credits, you have to let your lender know that you're below half time or that you're taking a break for the semester. And then financial aid is also work study offerings. So it's part-time work around your class schedule and it would be here on campus. So there are many departments that um, need work study help like uh, the welcome desk, um, student life, admissions, financial aid, the film school. So there's lots of options out there for work study opportunities. 
and you get paid hourly, and there's a set maximum number of hours to work per week. So all of these things requires the FAFSA to be filed. And it's mostly a need versus no need, um, depending on what you would qualify for. So if your need is greater than your no need, then um, you might have more financial aid options. But it also includes, in addition to financial aid, it includes scholarships. These you don't need to pay back either. And you have to maintain certain requirements like a GPA or being a certain amount of credit hours. So right now the scholarships for both summer and fall are open. And you can find them on our website under Getting Started Financial Aid Grants and Scholarships. Um, the foundation scholarships have a larger number of opportunities that you could apply for. But once you get your information entered, then usually um, if something comes up that you did not apply for, it'll give you a notification. It'll email you to let you know there's this other foundation scholarship that came up. So any questions so far on the financial aid process and what FAFSA is? Okay, great, we'll move on. So the application process, you can go to studentaid.gov to complete your FAFSA. And this is a one-stop shop. So remember this uh, website because you can do lots of things. It's a real good tool for everyone. You should set up an account so you can see how much you've taken out in loans, what your Pell usage is, how to get in touch with your lenders, um, anything that's gonna talk about your financial aid, you'll find on studentaid.gov. And if you need help filling out your FAFSA, you can call the financial aid line at 303-360-4709 and schedule an appointment to have somebody help you do your FAFSA, or we can give you a virtual phone number to do it online if you prefer not coming in and having help um, on a Zoom call. And that number is 303-352-8746. So, and remember the new aid year opens every October 1st. So now the current one open is the 22-23. And that will include this coming fall and next spring. So again, which semester do you plan on attending? If you're coming in the fall, then it would be the 22-23, and that'll cover, like I said, the fall, spring, and next summer. If you were here now um, and used your 21-22 for last fall, this spring, and then this coming summer, um, you could still get financial aid under the 21-22 FAFSA. So what taxes do you use when you're applying for either aid year? Um, you should have already done your 21-22 and that used your 2019 taxes, but for 22-23, it'll be the 2020 taxes. So and this is important to know because based off of the semester you may choose to attend does determine what aid year you must apply for. And if you're coming for summer, that's kind of an in-between. If you still have a remaining from 21-22, then you could go ahead and use that. But if you're going to be starting in the summer, brand new, then I would do the 22-23. Any questions? Feel free to use the chat. Great. Okay. So how do you keep your financial aid? So the first thing is to know if your program is financial aid eligible. So if you want financial aid to pay for your classes, you must be in a financial aid eligible program. 
And another big consideration for keeping your financial aid is the SAP and the MAP. So SAP is satisfactory academic progress, and then MAP is the measurable academic progress. So they're both similar, but the satisfactory academic progress is the one that is related to um, your grades and your completion rate. So every student should have a completion rate of 67% or above, have a 2.0 GPA or higher. And if you have a 0% completion rate for a semester, that makes you immediately ineligible for financial aid for the coming semester, and you'd have to submit an appeal to see if it could be reinstated. So here are the programs that do not qualify for financial aid. So in business, it's the real estate certificate. Early childhood profession is early childhood teacher level one. The emergency medical technician basic EMT certificate is ineligible. Um, in the healthcare field, it's nurse aid and phlebotomy. Certificate of achievement is communication and philosophy. And then other um, things that would make you ineligible are non-degree seeking, or if you're an undeclared, undecided in your degree or program of study, and then if you're just a guest student for, say, the summer. So intro to financial literacy. Um, the definition of financial literacy is it consists of several financial components and skills that allow an individual to gain knowledge regarding the effective management of money and debt. So why is it important? Uh, because it equips us with the knowledge and skills we need to manage money effectively, and not just while you're in college, but for your lifetime. And why does CCA care about financial literacy? Because your financial health is just as important as your education. It will guide you throughout life. And did you know that CCA has a financial literacy curriculum? So every month, there's a, a different topic that I do either um, tabling events or Zooms like today on different topics like budgeting and saving. So try to catch those. And then they'll also be on our resource page in the financial aid section of our website. And then the list of monthly events, budgeting, spending and savings, debt basics, identity theft, life events, financial institutions, credit basics, and how to use studentaid.gov, and then how to do your exit counseling once you're graduating and you need to start repaying on those loans. So several of these topics will uh, be discussed in other Zoom sessions for this week for Financial Literacy Week. So now we're gonna talk about the Intro to Cash course. And this is a really good tool for anyone to use um, students, staff members, faculty, anyone, your parents, they can go on to our website and click on the link to set up the cash course um, opportunity here. So all you need to do is put in your first name, last name, and email address. And you'll find this again on our CCA website under financial aid, and then click on financial aid resources. And if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to find the cash course link. So click on that blue hyperlink and it'll take you to the screen above where you can start and set up your um, information to gain access to the course. Okay. 
So once you've created your account, you can browse the website for MS Financial Literacy opportunities that you can use every day, everywhere, and forever. So there's no, you know, it's open all the time. You could do it at eight o'clock at night or eight o'clock in the morning. It's just based on your schedule. So the dashboard um, will show you featured selection. It'll come up with, you know, maybe every month there'll be a new featured section. Uh, so this is about borrowing. So understanding loans, credit debts, and credit scores. And then below there's the <clears throat> by assignments section. If you're like working with TRIO or maybe Title IV, um, they'll assign different topics and things to you. So you wanna make sure that you're viewing your assignments there. Um, my activity will show all of the personal activity that you've done over time and what the results were. Um, there's also financial tools, um, this is a really great section. So it gives you everything. It gives you the coursework, uh, calculators, budget, uh, wizard worksheets, quizzes, and articles that increase your financial knowledge. And then also there's a section for financial experts. It's kind of a Q and A. Um, people have submitted questions and the experts have answered. So, and then over on the left, um, any of these topics that we discussed can be accessed on the left as well. So here's in the financial tools section that I really, really like. So it's, it's showing you all the different topics that we just discussed. And if you click on each of them, it'll take you into um, several different topics that you wanna cover. So, and then the coursework, um, there are lessons that you can do, uh, featured videos, there's short little videos about each of the topics, financial calculators, and those are like, you know, figuring out your finances, how much um, you take in pay-wise every month, compared to what you're spending. So good information there. And then a glossary of the terms, because I know maybe some of the terms are kind of foreign to everyone. And um, so that's a good way to see what we're talking about. And then quizzes are kind of like what you know before you start taking the training and then what you learned after. And then of course there's more worksheets about you know, keeping the monthly bu budget and everything going. So that's a really, really good section. And this is the My Assignments section. So uh, you could click on the drop down in the middle of the screen there to see who your instructor is and if they've assigned any topic to you. And then again, check your status along the way. You could go into my activity and you can mark certain topics as your favorites. So they're easy to go back to um, my safe budgets. So anything that kind of worksheet or anything that you've been uh, working on and want to go back to daily or monthly, it'll be there. And then you could check your activity to see what you have done either by assignments or by self-study. And then you could select a, a date range to go back to the very beginning when you started to the last 30 days. So that's the intro to financial aid and literacy and cash course. Are there any questions? So no, there was a question from Robin uh, that Cash Course retired. Um, not all of CCA is using Cash Course anymore. Um, it's moved into another federal program, but it's still there. So once you set up that, um, all your information, you can still use it because CCA is now associated with this other program.
well, financial aid is. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, don't forget to um, either email me your student ID number or um, your email, and I could put you uh, your names in for the drawing. So you can attend all the events this week, and each time you attend, you'll be uh, another drawing entry will be put in for you. Okay, well, I thank everyone for attending. And Katrina, thank you for your help. Okay. Yes, thank you all so much. All righty. Um, let me give you my email. It's judith.anderson at ccaurora.edu. I'll put it in the chat as well. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.